In this video, I'm going over showing you a website where you can try different Linux distributions. If you're a Windows user or you're a Mac user and you're like, what is this Linux thing I'm always talking about? You can get on here and kind of just pop open a Linux desktop and poke around a little bit. Now, this is actually from a Forbes article that uh, they really launched this out, uh, I don't know, sometime this past week, and its site traffic has just gone through the roof. It's crashed them um, many times, and also there has been issues with performance, like a lot of laggy type performance, and to be expected, you're going to see that in this video as I walk through, like launching Gen 2 KDE spin of it. And, uh, you know, that's to be expected as, you know, a lot of this hype kind of falls down, you'll probably see the traffic uh, come back down to normal and performance uh, become somewhat semi-normal. Obviously, if you really, really want to test one of these, I highly recommend spinning your own virtual machine up and trying it out uh, if you're on Mac or Windows, VirtualBox will be sufficient. Obviously, Linux, you have KVM, VirtualBox, a whole host of them. Take your pick. And uh, you can easily uh, spin this up and then get the native or near native uh, performance from it. So it's really a, a neat project. Now, I'm going to drop into like super user and other things, and you're going to actually get to see all the things you can do in here, which is actually pretty extensive. Uh, the one thing I did notice from these tests, you do not get internet access, which is a good thing because people will be looking up all kinds of shady shenanigans using the web browser and pinging and causing all kinds of havoc across the interwebs using their services, which we don't want that. So this is just a good way to test the desktop just to kind of dip your toe in the water to see, hey, is this any good or not? So with that said, let's go ahead and jump over onto my desktop. I'm going to launch the website, give you a little tour and uh, pull up a Gentoo because, you know, everyone loves running Gentoo. That's a joke. Nobody runs Gentoo. Don't, just don't do it. If you have to ask, no. Okay, so here we are on distrotest.net. I went ahead and clicked on Gen 2 just to kind of see what the default stock would be out of the box. And uh, what you get is here, usually there'll be a queue, especially since the Forbes article really made this site blow up. Um, we just click Open VNC Viewer. I'm going to go ahead and maximize the screen. And... And then we're just going to select Gentoo x86. And then it'll say, hey, what do you want for your key map? We want 41 for the US. Now, I will say uh, the boot time is rather slow. Uh, I did mess around a little bit with uh, a lot of other distros on here just, just to kind of test out their system. It's pretty laggy just because of so much uh, of the load that's going on with their servers. But if you're just kind of interested in what a certain desktop environment looks like, uh, that's kind of cool. So, I mean, you can totally just log in here, kind of see what the default desktop is, tinker around a little bit, and then go, you know what, I want to try that out for real and then load it up on your system or maybe even in a local VM on your, your system. But uh, this is a really neat website. You can actually just get on here and, and try out any distribution, really. Eventually, you, you can actually try a distribution out. All right. So it has been a couple minutes since I hit the go button. But here we are with a functional desktop running Gentoo. We break walls at the speed of make. So you can get, get in here and play around. I bet you if I was the system admin of this website, I would just spin up a whole new image each time. So obviously this is a live CD. So whatever happens, I could, you know, DD and, and format all their stuff. But this is an isolated, you know, sandboxed instance. I'm sure as soon as I shut it down or go to format this instance, it would just simply kill it and then remake it from its master image file, which no one has access to except for the site makers. So a really neat way to kind of get in here and just tinker around with things. 
Um, again, I don't think, uh, let's see, I, I don't think you can ping the outside world from here, so they're not going to be able to use their servers for like malicious purposes or anything like that, um, which is good. <laughs> you also can't get on the web and, and browse a whole bunch of stuff that's super bad too. So uh, again, this is a neat little way to experience a distro that you might want to tinker around with for just a, a couple seconds, just kind of get it over a feel for it. And then just simply exit out, shut it down, and then you're done. Um, I'm stopping the instance and then someone else says, oh, okay, we're going to go ahead and spin up another one and then it uh, just goes ahead and kills it. So there you have it. That's distrotest.net. I absolutely love what this site's doing, giving you know people the time to just experience something new. You can just load up a web browser, click play, let that desktop load, and then just kind of poke around a little bit just to see if this is something you might want to get into or not. Uh, at the very least, a Windows user can get on here and kind of poke around and go, oh, okay, I can kind of see what's the deal with Linux Mint, for instance, or maybe even Pop! OS. Uh, just load up your distribution that you might want to try on here and see what you think the default flavor of it is. Now, my whole thing is distributions don't matter, and... They just don't want you to learn how Linux works, how it's constructed. So I highly recommend diving deeper. Don't just be looking for that out of the box distribution experience that's going to be absolutely perfect. Because guess what? That doesn't exist. I think every Linux distribution has needs a level of customization. And uh, depending on the user, sometimes that customization is a ton of stuff. And sometimes it's just a little tweaks here and there. But needless to say, it needs to be done because if you're a Windows user coming to Linux, you'll find out really quick that it is a lot different and you need to learn a lot of things about Linux before really understanding it and being able to use it as your main daily driver. But that's going to do it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. And if you haven't already, click the bell icon because you'll get notified when I post new videos. And I'll see you on the next one.